When you think of Linux gaming, you probably think of playing games through Proton on a desktop or mobile system, but still using a fairly general Linux distro, something like PopOS, Manjaro, Ubuntu, Arch, and things like that. But what if I said, very soon, Chromebooks were going to be on the table. So at Google's Game Developer Summit, Greg Hartel, who is a product director at Google, incorrectly stated that the alpha for Steam is now available on Chromebooks. And it's not like this was a big reveal. It is coming soon, but everyone knew that it was coming. So since about 2020, we know that Valve and Google have been working together to try to bring Steam along with Steam Play, Proton, or in this case, it's being called Borealis over to the Chromebooks. Now, instead of saying the alpha was already out, what he was supposed to say is the alpha is coming soon. So following this, they went and posted a blog post saying, yo, this is happening. Steam to Chrome OS. Hello, Chromebook community. As you may have already heard, our team is working with Valve to bring Steam to Chrome OS. We are very excited to share that we'll be landing an early alpha quality version of Steam on Chrome OS in the dev channel for a small set of Chromebooks coming soon. Please come back to the forum for more information. While Chromebooks are typically low powered devices, this shouldn't really be that surprising considering what Chrome OS actually is. So firstly, it's literally just running a modified version of Gentoo. So sure, it's heavily modified, but it's still a regular Linux distribution under the hood. Secondly, since Crostini, the idea of running Linux apps on Chrome OS came out, you've actually been able to run Steam on Chrome OS. It hasn't been a great experience, but it has been possible. The change here is this is going to be a native Steam app. But before we get into that, if you want to support the channel and perhaps you need a server, be sure to go check out brodyrobertson.xyz slash Linode, linked on screen and in the description down below. When you sign up, add your details and all of that fun stuff, you'll be given $100 free credit. And being completely honest, I have been using Linode way before they knew I existed, and I think they run a great service. And now enjoy the rest of the video. Which, considering the general low-powered nature of Chromebooks, any extra overhead that can be removed is always going to be a good thing. Now, I know someone's going to say, but what about everything running as a web app? Well, we can ignore that. That's the whole point of Chrome OS. And you might be thinking, well, why would you care about Steam on a Chromebook? You don't run a Chromebook. You don't plan to run one anyway. Well, the simple answer is both Linux gaming and Chrome OS or Chromebook gaming, whatever you want to say, are both going to be using Proton. This does mean that gaming on a Chromebook is going to have the same sort of limitations we have on regular Linux. For example, anti-cheat may be an issue in some places, weird proprietary codecs, and things like that. But because we're adding these millions and millions of devices into this pool of devices that are now reliant on Proton and Steam Play, it makes it a far more compelling matter for developers to make their games in ways that play nicely with those systems. Sure, it may not be compelling enough for every single developer. I don't expect Microsoft to go out of their way to make sure all of their games using anti-cheat work really, really well. But it is going to encourage developers to not put in roadblocks just for the sake of making sure their game doesn't work on Linux. Now, until the alpha drops, there are a couple of things which are a little bit unclear. One of those is which Chromebooks are actually going to be supported. Because as they said, only a small subset of them are going to be supported during the alpha. So right now, we do have sort of an initial list. This is reported on by 9to5Google based on some code changes made to the Chrome OS source code. And these code names we're seeing are based on the motherboards in these devices. So we have the Volta, the Acer Chromebook 514. We have the Volette, the Acer Chromebook 515. We have the Voxel, the Acer Chromebook Spin 713. The Delbin, the Asus Chromebook Flip CX5. The Drobit, or Drop, drop It? I'm going to say Drobit. The Asus Chromebook CX9. And the LME, the HP Pro C640 G2 Chromebook Enterprise along with a so far unreleased device from Lenovo titled as Linda. Now the Volta is a really weird inclusion on this list because all of these other Chromebooks, with the exception of the one we don't know about, all of these other Chromebooks are really high-end Chromebooks. So they either have 11th gen i5s or i7s. The Volta though only has a Celeron from 2016 and four gigabytes of RAM. 
I think the reason why this is on the list is to see how well Steam is going to go on the really low-powered Chromebooks. Now, this obviously isn't as low as you can go with a Chromebook. If you want to go and run some, like, ancient Chromebook, or not even ancient Chromebook, a modern Chromebook running an ancient ARM processor, you can go way worse. But when it comes to the x86 devices, this is basically as low as you can go. Either that is the case, or the device they meant to mention isn't the Acer Chromebook CB514-1H, it's actually the Dash 1W. So this likely has the exact same motherboard, but this one ships with an 11th gen i7 processor. I have a feeling that this might be the device they actually meant to include here. So besides the weird Volta inclusion, the minimum specs for the Steam Alpha is going to be an i5 or an i7 11th gen, and also 7 gigabytes of RAM. This basically eliminates pretty much every Chromebook, but this is just going to be for the Alpha. When Crostini first came out as well, it was a very limited subset of devices. You want to have it running on a small set of devices. This makes it much, much easier to do bug reporting because you're not worrying about all of the different SKUs, you're just worrying about the software itself. There is also evidence that testing is taking place with 10th gen Intel CPUs, but even so, that still eliminates the vast majority of Chromebooks out there. One question that still remains though, is what about AMD? None of these devices are running AMD CPUs. Right now, nobody really knows, but it's likely if they are included in the alpha or they come into the beta, it's probably going to be the similar device range to what we see with the Intel CPUs. But to be completely honest, I would much rather game on an AMD CPU anyway. They do a much better job at doing integrated graphics. Intel certainly better than they used to be in the past, but AMD is so far ahead in that class. That's something important to keep in mind. There are not Chromebooks with discrete GPUs. That is still something that is being worked on. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA are all working on getting discrete GPUs working, and the first one that does it is going to basically take over that entire market. So for now, the games you're going to be able to play, like you're going to be able to play pretty much anything you want if you want to play it like 3 FPS, but reasonably play, it's going to be lightweight indie titles and esports titles like CSGO and things like that. If I had to guess who works out discrete GPUs first based on the existing laptop market, I would probably have to say NVIDIA, considering they basically have a complete control over the Windows side. Sure, AMD does exist, but most devices that ship with a discrete GPU run an NVIDIA card. It's likely they have the extra resource to spend on getting it working on Chromebooks as well. But I certainly would like to see the entire Chromebook market be red, or the entire Chromebook market be Intel. That would be really, really cool. Another thing we're not sure about is the way that Valve is going to approach the Chromebook market. So we all know that years ago, back when Steam first came out for Linux, they started selling Linux native games on Steam. So does that mean that when this happens, we're going to start seeing Chromebook games on the Steam market. So in that case, it would be Android games, for example. I know that right now, all of that is handled through the Google Play Store, but I wouldn't be entirely surprised if Valve wants to try to get into the mobile market as well. I know there have been talks about it for years and years now, and it's really difficult to get into that market because of how much control Google Play and then the iTunes, Apple Store, whatever you want to call it over on the iOS side has. But doing that through Chromebooks might make it a little bit easier. For the record, Valve hasn't stated this is their plan, and I don't think that Google would be very happy about Valve trying to do that, but sometime down the line after Steam is established on Chromebooks, I think it is certainly possible. At the end of the day, though, I don't have any plans to main Chrome OS as my system. I like my Linux system, and I don't think that's ever going to change. But I do stand by the fact that improving gaming on Chromebooks is going to improve it on Linux, and I think that is better for everyone. And Valve has been trying to decouple gaming from Windows for years and years now. They know that you can't go and get developers to stop developing games for Windows, so giving them a way to easily make their games work on these other systems seems like the best bet to take. 
and making it work well on Chromebooks is just another step along this path. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, to Bear Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.